Kwanzaa and as chief, as agents uh, of the presidential candidate then. But I want to confirm that in no way, honorable chair person, will my personal knowledge of him affect uh, my judgment uh, or will make me get engaged in any bias as I, we go through this vetting process. And with that, we can let's seek your permission to proceed to ask the question. Okay. Uh, Mr. Davis Churchill, uh, uh, I want to ask you questions that uh, Kenyans are asking. That's what I've been doing throughout this process. Things that matter to Kenyans. Kenyans are asking, the cost of electricity is one of the highest in the region, and this affects the cost of production, hence the cost of many of the basic commodities uh, that uh, are required by Wanainchi. It's also said that uh, the high cost of electricity is because of the loop-sided contracts between KPLC and independent power producers. Um, yet, despite the fact that Kenya is endowed with wind, solar, and geothermal renewable energy resources, so the question Kenyans will want to hear from you is what steps will you take should you be approved as cabinet secretary for energy and petroleum to ensure that you mitigate and deal with these challenges that are facing Kenyans. Thank you. Uh, Davis, you'll have to hold. We'll do batches of four, four, four questions. Then you come to answer all of them together. So you can indicate as we go along. Majority Leader. Thank you, Chair. Davis, uh, you've alluded to the so-called chicken get scandal that made you step aside in uh, the year, was it 2015 or 2014, thereabout, and investigations that followed. Would you be privy to the outcome of those investigations? What became of those investigations now that uh, you are not reappointed to cabinet in 2017, as much as it was the prerogative of Uru Kenyatta to appoint or not to appoint you, but you went ahead to be appointed as chief of staff in the office of the deputy president this year. Is that to mean you, nothing came of the investigations or uh, what was the issue? Two, uh, if you are approved and you had uh, begun some very good work with the last mile program, in the first time of the Jubilee administration, uh, but uh, as the member Shalai says, Kenyans are really concerned on the performance today of the, our power generation, the power transmission companies, especially KPLC. Hundreds of thousands of Kenyans today are connected to power. Uh, some consuming that power and not paying for it because KPLC is unable to provide them with uh, meters. Many others have applied for uh, a connection of power, but they cannot get connected again on the excuse that there are no meters and uh, contractors have uh, uh, dropped lines into their houses. They have not gotten the lines into the KPLC system. What would you do immediately get into office to fix some of those uh, systemic problems that are there at KPLC to make uh, both connection, transmission connection and billing of power in this country a, a little bit more efficient? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chirchir, yeah, unlike some of my colleagues, personally, I haven't had a chance to interact with you or to work with you previously. This could be the first engagement I'm having with you on a, a close range. Uh, that notwithstanding, of course, there are certain things which are not adding up. And why do I say so? Just to pick from where uh, Honorable Chungu has left, you've indicated that uh, you stepped aside, or you are forced to step aside. Because I was in the House then, 2015, when the President came to Parliament and read the names of those who had fallen short of the requirements of Chapter 6 of the Constitution. And therefore, you are forced by circumstances to step aside. Uh, and you say investigations were conducted. I'm not sure if you are aware when they were concluded. But that notwithstanding, 
from your own submission, you said that you then participated actively in the campaigns of 2017, and your coalition won. Isn't it curious, then, that from 2015 to 2022, you are essentially out of public service? And yet, your coalition won in 2017. And the president, of course, is the appointing authority. He could have the reason why he didn't appoint you. But I'm sure you could have been curious enough to find out from the president or whoever it was why you are not featuring among the appointees, having worked so hard to deliver the victory, and also having been cleared, if at all you are cleared by the investigation. So secondly, until you came, of course, on board much later in 2022, as a chief, a chief of staff in the office of the deputy president, at the tail end of the, the term of the government. But that is very curious. Two is, uh, I'm sure it is, you are aware, because it's in public domain, that executives of Smith and Usman were eventually tried, convicted, and indeed jailed in the UK. Two of them, two of them, a man and his son, for having bribed the interim electoral commission officials with 50 million Kenya shillings. So the bribers were convicted and jailed. Now those who were bribed have to date remained scot free, if you may ask me. And to Kenyans, of course, you are one of the suspects, because it was in public domain. So, so, so you may need to, uh, uh, to update us as again as a committee what you could be knowing as, to, as far as the outcome of these investigations are concerned, and if at all any action has been taken against any person that was involved in this scandal on the Kenyan side, on the Kenyan side. Because as Honorable Bunyet said earlier on, the requirements of the Constitution at Chapter 6 are so stringent, yes, that, uh, that uh, any, any slight indication, any slight suspicion that you are not uh, having a proper integrity could bring also question marks on, in Kenyans' minds. So kindly help us understand. Thank if you. I, thank you. Thank you. Jumet. <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Chairman, mine is brief. I wanted to ask the nominee that if you look even though you are out of office by then, but the last five years, the places where there have been many cases relating to corruption, even though now we can tell them they are politically instigated, but let's say politically instigated corruption, let me use it for the good of it, that word, were majorly in the energy sector. If you look at Kenya Power, if you look at Kenya Pipeline, if you look at this, what is your view? Because that must be the thing that is making the cost of living, that must be the thing that is making the cost of electricity very high in this country. What do you think you'll do differently? Because you left office in 2015, then uh, another CS came in, he looked like he continued with a, with, a, with a trend that could have made the cost of electricity and the cost of energy very high in this country. What is your view? Is there corruption in the energy sector or it is as clean as a snow and all those cases were politically instigated? Davis, you can answer those four. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And um, uh, for those uh, four questions, I'll run through them, starting with the Mwishima uh, Shole, Gladys Shole on the cost of electricity and whether the contracts are lopsided. Um, having, having served as CS Energy and Petroleum, I can say with some level of authority, I understand the sector and the challenges which basically afflict this particular industry. Um, electricity in Kenya 
is predominantly generated from hydro, about 30%, uh, running down Kindaruma all the way to Kitaru, uh, the cascaded uh, uh, water dams uh, out there, the Tana Delta. And uh, that's about 30%. We've since developed geothermal and um, glad for the House or the members of this committee to know that geothermal Kenya is quite a significant player in the geothermal industry. With, whereas we have about another 800 megawatts of geothermal, we are actually the sixth largest geothermal uh, user uh, worldwide because of the technology and the knowledge, the support of government and parliament in investing in geothermal development. We then have today quite a bit of wind coming out of Luangalani and uh, solar from Garissa and the small solar all over the place, um, totaling to about 3,000 megawatts. The challenge that maybe what I've not mentioned is the heavy fuel generators, which also amounts to about 600 megawatts, which were brought in to mitigate the challenge of drought sometimes in the 90s. Um, they were basically meant they are quick to deploy, and so when you have a problem, you bring in an agreco, it comes in two weeks or three weeks, it is meant to mitigate a drought challenge, but they've become a permanent feature in the generation of power uh, to our grid. Uh, diesel generation is very expensive. Uh, if you look at, um, I think I tried to tabulate somewhere, from hydro today, we generate power and put it on the grid at about between three to four cents US. Geothermal is at about seven cents US, and uh, so is solar. The earlier signed solar were at about 12 cents, but since then, the devices have really come down, and the price of solar today, we could even get it for five cents US, uh, six cents US, and so on and so forth. To compare with the thermal generators, we are talking about 20, 22, 23 cents US. It is four, five times as expensive, but they have since become feature of our generation matrix, and they dispatch almost on full time because of the challenges of uh, global warming and weather. When the water is low, you have to supplement using the diesel generators. There is something called intermittency in uh, solar, in the green energy, solar or wind. There is so much wind at night and there isn't much during the day. So we have so much power at night when we don't need power. And uh, during the day, there is solar and we are able to use it because it's available during the days when our industries are running. But at night, the power is absolutely not there. So when you look at the effective uh, matrix, what you will call energy matrix, and though we are at 3,000, you could actually say if the intermittent power was not there uh, in solar, in wind, the diesel generator has become a permanent feature that must dispatch for us to run our economy. So whereas um, other economies like Ethiopia are running their uh, energy uh, to power their factories at four, four cents US, five cents US on solar and so on and so forth, we are running our uh, energy supply to our industries at 22, 23 cents US. When you load the cost of transmission, uh, which is more on the Kenya power side, O&M, and the challenges uh, of uh, uh, what you would call um, uh, customer challenges and the weak network, you are talking about uh, running our economy sometimes at up to 30 cents US, which is not really sustainable. We cannot, so we must then go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves, even with the 3,000 megawatts today, and Kenya Power or the technical people will tell you the peak time consumption today is at about 2,100, 2,100 megawatts. You basically are saying if 2,100 megawatts is being deployed to the grid uh, at night when there is no solar, then you must support the grid with diesel 
uh, generation, which is meant to be really uh, used to, to, to support the power shortage, and more particularly, uh, picking. There, there's something called picking during around 7 o'clock when we all switch on our powers in our homes and industries are still running. The, 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 the requirement suddenly goes up and you need these diesel generators to, to pick and, and basically support the grid. So there's a challenge that we must then all go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves, how are we going to fix this challenge? And it is not something that you fix overnight because power generation is something that uh, if we start today giving out a license through a PPA, by the time we dispatch power out of that project, it will probably be four or five years. So there are no quick fixes. We must do proper planning. We must get the correct power mix and ensure that we feed our power to the grid at the right cost. Leave the diesel generators to support picking and for emergency use only. But to almost have them as a permanent feature uh, is really something that uh, cannot be sustained, and it is killing our industries, it is killing our economy, it's a big challenge. It's also not good for the environment, because uh, these are, we are burning fossil fuel, and in terms of the emission, carbon emission, and the ratification we've made in terms of uh, reducing the global warming to, uh, I think it was first in uh, Paris, and then Glasgow, and now Egypt next month, we must reduce the use of fossil fuel. So whereas it's a very expensive form of energy and it's closing our industry, it's also causing serious environmental challenge that you members may be aware that uh, even the loss, the current drought that has caused us to lose over three, three, million, three million animals in most of the uh, semi-arid arid and semi-arid part of the country is part of this global warming. Um, so really, we need to sit down and address the concern of the cost of electricity. We need to generate more from geothermal, where we have uh, a lot of resource. We are told we have up to 10,000 megawatts. And I think we are experts today in development of geothermal, given the fact that Kenyan uh, personnel are currently assisting Ethiopia uh, to develop geothermal. When we are buying 400 megawatts from Ethiopia, we should possibly be spending that resource to develop our own resource. So, Chairman, we'll need to sit down with the technical people at the energy uh, bodies, Kenyan, GDC, uh, and really retrace where we've gone wrong, relook at how to improve uh, on the matrix, power matrix, reliability of a transmission network so that uh, we don't have this intermittency of uh, power dropping and messing up equipment in industry. We must look at the cost structure of uh, the power that we supply to the users because uh, it's one thing also to, to generate and load so much uh, cost because of our inefficiencies in the way we work in Kenya Power, in RARE, or uh, GDC for that matter. So there is work to be done, Chairman, on, 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 the, on the challenge of uh, cost of electricity. And then to basically summarize on the cost of electricity, as a student, I didn't mention that I did a master's in international management. And in strategic management, in one course, you get the global farms. Global farms are farms who manufacture out of their home countries because of the advantages they draw from cost of, cost of um, cost of manufacturing. Out of UK today, the cost of labor is so expensive. Japan, cost is expensive. Germany, the cost of doing everything is expensive. So they relocate to places like China, Ethiopia, Kenya, because of the cost of doing business. If then our cost of doing business starting from power or human resource is high, we miss that opportunity. Global firms look for least cost countries countries who offer competitive advantage through power. That's why we are doing the SECs and so on and so forth. So it's one thing that we must address quickly and uh, put Kenya where it belongs in the state of nations. Um, so those are some of the steps we need to look at. I think it's teamwork. We need to bring everybody on the table. Uh, one question which I asked myself when I was nominated for this position is really 
um, how do I navigate this challenge? And more particularly, the fact that everybody chair in the energy sector, when you see the mission and vision, the mission particularly of all these organizations, uh, Geothermal Development Company, uh, Kenjen, Kenya Power, they talk about competitive price power. But do, do we really mean, do we understand, are, are we competitive, competitive against who? Where, when we are a monopoly. We should be competitive against the world prices of delivering power to the grid to be able to attract some of these global farms. So, Chair, I am uh, up to the task, I'm aware of the challenge, and we need to address it to basically put Kenya where it ought to be. Mwishimwe uh, Chungwa, Anthony, uh, am I privy to the outcome of the investigation on Chicken Gate? I, for a long time, I assumed that the file had been closed and I was correct, but I didn't have any documentation until when I was inv invited for vetting and um, there was one affidavit done by the CEO for the Transparency International. She's called, um, I think I have the document here. She's... Um, Sheila Masinde, and Sheila Masinde did an affidavit, and uh, basically the clerk to the National Assembly, um, Sarah Kiyoko, called me and I, I picked a copy of it, and um, I learned that my name had been mentioned in respect to Chicken Gate. Uh, I went to my lawyer and asked them to confirm whether the file had been closed because investigations had been, in my own understanding, had been finished. Those who were found culpable had been taken to court and charged. And uh, I've got a letter done to the clerk of the National Assembly, which is basically observing me of any uh, liability in terms of uh, those who were found culpable and I did, I, I do expect that the clerk should have put that in the file, uh, Mr. Chairman, to clarify and close this issue once for all. Um, so I've done also a sworn affidavit to confirm uh, and respond to the affidavit of Sheila Masinde to that, to that extent. So that, whereas I assume that that had been closed, at least I was actually happy for a moment that we do this uh, confirmation hearing because it gives us the opportunity to check our past, confirm our tax compliance. We can't, we can't see the letter he's referring to. You have a copy of that letter? I have a copy of that letter, Chairman. Share with us through the clerk. But I've, I saw it at uh, clerk's office. This is, um, that's the letter. So, Chairman, I've done that. I did leave two copies with the clerk yest uh, yesterday because I just did get the affidavit on Saturday evening. So, Chairman, I do expect that, whereas I assume that the case had been closed. Uh, Chair, on a point of order, maybe just in the interest of saving time for the committee, the clerk's office should supply such documents and circulate them. Because if we had them, there was even no need then of, probably no need of asking the question. If there's already something. And I already gave instructions that any document received from the nominee or any of the government agencies or any affidavits, adverse or otherwise, should be circulated to members in good time. So going forward, Florence, I arrange to do that, especially for the remaining nominees. So, Chairman, I... I then did an affidavit to respond to Sheila Masinde, and I did for it yesterday. But for a moment, I was a bit disappointed because my name and my character uh, was put to question for several years through a document that was placed before Parliament, and I would expect that Parliament should protect its citizens so that we do not work down careers of serious citizens in this country when uh, people make allegations. But I was also quite happy that the uh, approval act 
of Parliament does require that submissions uh, of any adverse uh, concern about anybody be done through an affidavit, a sworn affidavit, so that we do not have claims and uh, mischief of people trying to pull out peop down people's characters. So in terms of uh, the vetting process, I think uh, it was well thought out that chairman, uh, we do require that we do sworn affidavits and so that the face of the person complaining uh, and not unnecessarily pulling somebody's uh, character and career down is able also to stick out and say, I want to stand against uh, an integrity issue and, and therefore be able to corroborate um, what exactly the challenge is. Um, as regard um, the concern of ad, uh, generation and transmission, which was uh, raised by, again, Anthony, Moshimo Anthony Chungwa, it, it's cross cutting from uh, what uh, Moshimo Gladys Boshole did, uh, Gladys uh, did ask. And I think I've touched on that question, but let me just go into one area of uh, why I think we really need to address the power sector, the cost of energy in this country. Um, there's been for a while, I think, I think because of the monopoly of Kenya power or what would actually, I think the, the Act, the Energy Act 2019 has addressed that monopoly to some extent, it's just implementation. But to a very good extent, the customer service, which is really more of um, a big challenge that we need to address because we look at customers and a customer is a person who buys and buys again. Uh, they are not buyers. They, they are, we really are permanently with Kenya Power and Lighting and we need to have a, a relationship with Kenya Power in terms of understanding. Even the bill is so complicated. We need to really understand uh, and improve the customer uh, service and customer relationships. In my MBA course, Chairman, I did uh, put deliberately a document on one of my term papers. I, one of my term papers, Chairman, in my MBA is a case of um, a company which was in medical insurance called CRM Implementation Failure at Cigna Corporation, which when I review today, uh, tells the story about our energy sector in terms of uh, failure to recognize uh, customer relationship and more dealing with being just transactional basis. And I would like to encourage members to look at that term paper. It almost reflects uh, how we behave in the energy sector uh, to our customers, how when our numbers, are, the bottom line numbers are not adding up, we push it to the customer instead of mapping out change strategy to address That is those very concerns. good. Tell the committee what we are going to do to stop this. Um, it, it's, it's one of my first assignment, Chairman, to basically look at the cost structure of our uh, parastatals. I think we generate power, for example, at $4, $5 on the renewable energy. And when we give it to Kenya Power to distribute, they, they distributed another four to five cents. It's not acceptable. And, and so we must look at our distribution cost to be able to bring down the cost of power. We must look at the strength of the network in a very structured way. We must decouple. I think what, what we did sometimes was the generator is Kenjan, the transmission is Kentraco, the off-taker is Kenya Power. But if you seriously look at how you operate today, sometimes and rare does the social obligation of doing the last mile and the, uh, providing power to our homes. When you look at um, the decoupling of services between Kenya Power and rare, I think rare today is called uh, RERAC, uh, Rural Electrification and uh, Renewable Energy Corporation. You cannot draw a clear line on who does what. Kenya Power tend to do more of social work, which cannot really, uh, as a commercial entity, the social work should be done by RARE, and which is funded by government. So we don't fund RARE 
and yet the work is being done by Kenya Power, and then they owe one another. When you look at GDC, GDC was supposed to be de-risking the fields for geothermal development. Uh, building power generations today, which is the, the, the space for Kenyan, and uh, Kentraco and Kenya Power, you can distinguish where transmission ends and where distribution starts. So we need to sit down as a team and work on full decoupling and understanding the role of one body against another body. If Mwishimu Wakosin wants to pull some power in um, uh, Pokot South to some end, it is the role of RERIC to do that, not Kenya Power, as a social obligation. And we will bring budget to the house to support that, uh, to ensure that the last mile is fully covered and not use a commercial entity like uh, Kenya Power, who then loads the losses to the customers in the commercial sectors, and we end up losing our, our serious businessmen because of uh, cross-subsidy. The subsidy should be left and be done within the social context of REREC, and we leave Kenya Power to do the more commercial work as an off-taker, pay Kenjan what is due to the generators and the PPPs. I'm told today uh, Kenjan is owed, and the other PPPs are owed over 23 billion because of failure of Kenya Power to pay. So, Chairman, there is work to be done. Uh, we're going to do it, and I understand that space to a very good extent. Um, Davis, we are not doing very well on time. Let me... Let me we spend about uh, 30 minutes I think on two questions. Chairman, I've answered to a very good extent Mr. Yes. Wandai's question of... Uh, chicken the, gate. Chicken gate. And... Um, I think the only challenge is really, yes, it was in the public domain. I do also expect that my members of parliament to defend me to some very good extent so that I should not have been out for several years on an allegation and a file that had been closed. Uh, so, and I, you owe me for not, it came to the house, the house should have, the, not just for Churchill, the house should really protect Kenya so that we don't trample on people's careers. Mr. Yes, yes, Speaker, just a point of order. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you know, <laughs> Mr. Chulicheri is making a very serious allegation <laughs> that I should have helped him yes. to get back to the cabinet when you know very well that the coalition that formed the government was not my coalition. <laughs> really. Chair, Chair, I think uh, with your permission, the nominee might, be very, might not be very wrong because he is aware that eventually the person who had asked the CS to step aside, President Uhuru Kenyatta, ended up being a leader in the party that Honorable Pio and I is chair. now leader of. You didn't have to cross to our side. Yeah. You know, our chair, side is... Chair, uh, chair. It's angry. Chair, with your permission, yes. it's only that we want to stay with the decorum as you are ordered. Yes. I almost veered off to election rigging and other issues. I just <laughs> left. I told the Ushunga I'm not going there. <laughs> Uh, can we have the next batch? Owen, Robert, Murugara, and Koich. Uh, Davis and uh, honorable members, we are doing very poor on time. Uh, now, Please ask precise questions. Let's get precise answers. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Chair, thank you very much, uh, uh, Davis Churchill. Uh, I, I would like to ask you a question on in terms of power use, uh, uh, electricity, and the productivity of water. That the tariff used for producing water using electricity is higher than that of street lights. And areas like at the coast where you have to pump water up and other years in this country where you have to pump water that goes up uh, to, to homes, the cost of production is very high, such that water companies in those areas cannot break even because they spend more money to pay for electricity than to, for the water. And yet, uh, the policy at the ministry has not changed for many years, and that people are suffering, that there's a lot of water dis uh, power disconnection in water works by KPLC because they are demanding that they be paid the commercial tariff. And yet you find that streetlights have a special tariff. It's very low. 
Uh, what are you going to do about this to ensure that we say water is life, water is the engine of all pro productivity in this country, and, uh, and actually there's a correlation between poverty and water. How are you going to assist the other ministry to ensure that we have water and there's no inter interruption? Robert uh, Mbui. Yeah, thank you, I Chair. Uh, Chair, I want to refer the committee uh, to page five on the documents uh, presented for this uh, nominee on the part where we are talking about sources of income and is indicated is income of 2021 and also 2022. In, I want to refer to the 2022 income. Now, he's indicated that on number five that uh, he worked in the office of the deputy president as chief of staff in the year 2022 and earned a whooping 18,448,000 shillings. Chair, my question is, assuming he started working on, on the 1st of January, which is actually a holiday, then how to stop working on the 9th of August because that was the election date, then it means that he was earning on average 2 million 527,000 shillings per month. Now my question is, is this the official public wage bill that has been approved by SRC for the office uh, of the chief of staff of the deputy president, considering that the deputy president's own salary is only 1.2 million per month? Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Uh, nominee, after water in life, electricity is next. So the ministry you're being vetted for is one of the most important in the country, especially to the rural persons who are yet to see electricity. The unit for measuring supply of connectivity of electricity in the country are constituencies. And the problem we have is the disparity between some constituencies and others, such that I talk about my own constituency, which in 2017 was at 9.5% connectivity. In spite of every work I did in five years, we were able to move it up to a maximum of 30%. There are other constituencies, and I have data of that, who are now at 100%. My question to you is this. What are you going to do to reduce or remove the disparity between constituencies, whether rural or urban, as far as electricity supply is concerned? Because Kenyans out there are now waiting to be connected to the national grid. Honorable Courage. Waziri, mine will be in uh, Kenya Power. <laughs> Actually, the story of the energy sector starts and ends with Kenya Power and Lightning. In fact, nowadays in Kenya, there's a famous quote, Kwamba, when it rains, Silas is it in a tuanguo, Kenya Power be in a noa wire. Power just goes off. It is something that you must find a way of fixing. And it goes, it goes beyond uh, policies. There must be a deliberate, the, the, I think there's a deliberate attempt by some officers in Kenya Power to disallow uh, connection of power. That is why they visit your house on a Friday, disconnect power so that they get something, and then again, uh, you, when you when you when you when you reconnect, uh, is when they can restore the supply. Number two is on uh, revenue collection by Kenya Power and meter reading. You find Kenya Power staff having to dodge vicious dogs in people's compounds, yet you can actually use technology to uh, do meter reading and give estimates on, 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 on what, is, what, what should be built. Thank you. Davis, can the answers be as brief uh, as the questions? I'll, I'll be brief, Chairman. Income, income Chairman, uh, as I declared, is uh, accurate. In 2022, I earned three million between January and March from my previous sources as indicated from 2021. And when I came to the office of the deputy president as chief of staff, I've earned salaries for 
five, six months. At a taxed net amount of about 764. I have been able to utilize a facility called a car grant, which is 10 million, uh, which is uh, available to that office as per the public service uh, laid out regulations. And when you break down that 18 million, I did my arithmetic and it's accurate, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, we have a GAG grant for the job group that I hold in the office uh, up, to, up to now. Uh, Chairman, uh, George, George Muru, Mur, Mur, Murugara disparity shouldn't, should be a thing of the past as soon as uh, George will clear me. I'll, I'll address your constituency. But more importantly, Chairman, uh, that's on a later note, the the progression on really rural electrification was utilizing the laid out network and maximizing the use of transformers in terms of connectivity. And it progressively went into most of the rural areas at about uh, 70, 80% today. When we do sit down to do the budget to address the uh, constituencies where this disparity exists, and when we do get the approval of the House uh, on that social expense to ensure that we power our homes, we should be able to move quickly from 30% to 70 and maybe on the second year to 100%, for not just for Georgia's constituency, but for all the other constituencies which have not been powered. Uh, but Nelson Koech, power goes off because our networks are very weak when it rains, Sometimes we have not maintained the networks and the trees come down on power lines. Some of the posts are rotten and we really need to upgrade our network. So we'll again be sitting down with the uh, entities, particularly Kenya Power and Rare, to address the strengthening of the network so that every time there is wind before the rain, the network doesn't come down. We need a strong uh, transmission and distribution network we also, towards the strengthening of the network, need to address uh, the vulnerability of, um, of uh, abuse of the network by those guys who trade in, uh, in scrap metal. But more importantly, we need to strengthen our network and address that challenge. Revenue, I'm told we are looking at today, most countries are looking at smart meters. We don't need anybody to come to your house to read the meters. Uh, in fact, smart meters, uh, like I said, I'm in the T sector chair, and our meters are read automatically, not because somebody has come, but remotely. So we can be able to, and we should be able to address that, Mushimwa uh, Nelson uh, Koech, as soon as I come in and we sit down with the team. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Davis. And now I'll give to. Yes, Owen. The question on water, uh, Owen Bayer, Mushimwa. Uh, is something that uh, is very interesting, even as we talk to the cost of power, we'll need, water is a very interesting source of energy because there's something called potential energy. When something is up, when it comes down, the energy, it releases energy. So we'll be seeking to use storing storage technologies to be able to improve the power in our network or in our system, and we can be able to pump power, water, back to the dam using uh, energy at night when we don't need energy out of uh, wind or solar during the day so that we can re reuse that water. The challenge of um, maybe uh, harmonizing the sector is work very closely with Warma to ensure that we do cooperate and see the meeting points on how much we should pay for the water we use to generate power um, so that the water then given to the Chairman, people. Chairman, I think he's, he didn't catch my question. That's why he skipped it. I asked why is the tariff of water higher than any other thing, especially when you're producing. You have water works in Sabaki. Kenya Power disconnects water because the water providers cannot meet the cost of production. When are we looking at a reduction of water production tariff in terms of electricity?
Le, le, Owen, let me understand that question properly because uh, he's asking yes. that power cost to, uh, to water service providers is high. Isn't that so? Yes. yes. Why is it so high? Is it high relative to other consumers? Correct. Um, hey, Chairman, um, the tariffing structure of Kenya Power, you could have seen something called C1, C2 to C15. And pumping of water using uh, the pumps is quite a heavy consumer of power. Uh, what I've not mentioned is you may not be aware that even as power is expensive to our homes, we only charge seven cents US on what we call lifeline tariff to over 70% of our home users. So the biggest challenge we have in the power sector is those people you're talking about who are pumping water are subsidizing the social users of power who consume one to 100 uh, kilowatts per month and because of the economic status, we, we basically have this very dirty kind of uh, subsidy program where we are using the, 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 the economic drivers, the companies who are supposed to be driving the economy to supplement the social service. So we need to look at that. Most of the, with the water panels, what do you call it, with the solar panels coming down today significantly, and the off-grid that we are developing to ensure that we do hold our captive most of our customers. I want to believe that we'll be looking at a policy where we can put solar on most of the water uh, pumping stations and reduce the cost of pumping significantly by uh, whatever, maybe even over 50%. Because solar costs today and being off grid, there'll be no transmission losses. Thank you, Chairman. I hope. Daoud, yeah. Amisi, Raso, Maisula. I'll come to you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Ask speaker. one question each. We are doing badly on time. Thank you, Chair, Speaker. Uh, uh, the nominee, Mr. Davis, you are aware we talk about petroleum and fuel products, the expenses and all that. Uh, what do you have once you come in? There was a time uh, my ex-governor, Kiraito Murongi, when he was the minister for petroleum, he, they had uh, explored uh, oil uh, in Turkana. And that oil was supposed to go all the way to Lamu, uh, maybe because we did not have a refinery. Uh, is there a plan still that we are going to prospect for oil? And is there a plan for the refinery, which was closed down in Mombasa, to be revamped and work so that we can reduce the price of fuel? So those are three questions in one. Uh, regarding fuel prices together with the refinery and exploration of oil because otherwise we are not going to get cheap oil and uh, fuel will be expensive so uh, will you be even looking at reducing the price I mean the excise duty and the duties on fuel to reduce the prices of fuel by more than 40 or 50 percent thank you chair so uh, Amisi one question yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, uh, over the past recent times, uh, Kenyans have complained of uh, the electric, uh, electricity bills and meter readings uh, capriciously going higher than normal, uh, and especially the Kenyans who don't have much consumption in terms of electricity. They have no machinery, they have no bakery, they have no factory, but the electricity is just all of a sudden they are not normal. It, it happened during your reign. Uh, I think it has persistently continued, although you left cere ceremoniously, you've explained the circumstances. But we still believe that uh, uh, they, this is an insider job. There are uh, officers within who collude, and they intentionally overprice Kenyans, and you end up paying a bill that is not yours. Now, uh, you didn't do anything while you were there. You are still heading to the same uh, place. You know, God performed miracles through Elijah. One of them was bringing fire down from sky and entering heaven by fire. 
So I don't know whether these miracles are going to happen in your reign. The next, uh, Russell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Churchill, I come from Marsabit. That is where you find Lake Tukana wind power, where you evacuate considerable energy all the way to Suswa. So my question is, what is it that you are likely to do so that the people of Marsabit will actually not be using generators when you are evacuating that considerable amount of power from their area, and yet they are not directly benefiting from that. <clears throat> Thank you. One question, Naisola. Thank you very much. And to the nominee, I want to ask this question, and I need a very simple answer. You know, like you're just talking to a normal hustler. To understand the whole issue on the price of fuel. We know that when fuel goes up, life goes, becomes even hard for Kenyans. And the whole lessons of, every, you know, you're told by Friday, fuel will come down by one shilling. So what is this? You know, Kenyans ask these questions and no one really answers it. And also the question on fuel subsidy. And, um, you know, really so that we can understand as hustlers the importance of removing fuel subsidy, but how do you cushion us at the moment? Mwishimwa Dawood from um, on the petroleum and the Lokicha oil that was discovered sometimes and where are we today? Um, I did my homework and the petroleum sector is at a phase called field development phase. This is the phase when their TALO and their consortium have submitted a report to the Ministry of Energy. That report is currently sitting with um, the regulatory body, uh, EPRA, Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Body. The report will be handed over to the Minister or the CS for Energy. And in line with the Petroleum Act, it should not be in that office for more than 30 days. Uh, it will then come to Parliament and the Act also stipulates that it should not be in Parliament for more than uh, 90 days. For purposes of looking at the commerciality, the, the, the economy of uh, pulling out the oil, and the report does say we can be able to do up to 120 million, um, there is a, a figure that I, I, let me not misquote because I'm, on, I'm talking to the whole world, 120 kilo barrels per day, uh, which when you convert at about 160 liters to the barrel is significant and that can address uh, the challenge facing the country. But that's slightly on the longer term. Uh, we will work together to expedite and make sure we don't work with 30 days, we don't work with 90 days, and therefore be able to tell the prospecting company to quickly get down and start uh, pulling out the product and uh, that might give us the security of the challenge we are currently facing. Uh, if I combine this with uh, Mwishimiwa Lesuda's uh, question, because they are, they are basically cutting across uh, on the same petroleum uh, area uh, the, with the price of fuel, it's a world phenomenon. The challenges of uh, Ukraine and Russia and the US and Canada refusing to buy, uh, putting embargo against buying that product um, created the supply-demand challenge. And uh, you, we may not be aware, but if we read, we know that the fuel prices uh, in the UK, in Canada, in Singapore, are, are running at, I was reading, Singapore is going at $9 to the liter. When I converted, that's about uh, 350 shillings to the liter. We don't think this um, Ukraine uh, Russia challenge will be forever, but certainly we need to mitigate and address our challenge. And um, I think it's uh, an opportunity to think out of the box and ask ourselves how can we be self-reliant? 
And that's why I was saying, let me cut across with Daoud's question in terms of developing quickly what is ours so that we are not over-reliant on uh, the other economies out there. And I'll, while reading that, I found a quote by Joe Biden that said, uh, when we are out of this challenge, we'll be stronger, uh, we'll be stronger and the world will be stronger and less reliant on, on fossil fuel. But, but when I paraphrase that, as a country, we really need to work on our geothermal, being an equatorial country, we'll work on our solar, work on storage of power so that we go into more of the electric cars with the conversion kits being fairly cheap today. So yes, it's a concern, it's a global challenge, and yet we think we are going to come out of it more stronger, uh, Mwishima Lasuda. Uh, refinery, uh, Buana Hamisi, where's Hamisi, was sitting somewhere over there. Um, we need to work on, I don't know whether it's a miracle, but I mean, there's no reason why anybody should pay for what they have not used. And as we work to introduce the um, uh, intelligent or whatever meters, we really also need to think out of the box on how Kenya power trades. Uh, think about how Safaricom trades. They give you a zone to manage, and you can buy power in bulk, and you prepay. For those of us who work for Safaricom, Safaricom is not owed any money. Uh, you prepay airtime and distribute. Collect the money, prepay, you collect more. There is no reason why Kenya Power cannot adopt those kind of simple uh, frameworks of a region being given to uh, uh, a manager or rather a business person. You buy in bulk at a discount, you make you a little money, and uh, you manage your customers. So certainly we'll be working together to look at how to re-engineer the traditional way of handling customers from Kenya Power, uh, bringing in the smart meters, and working with uh, everybody uh, to ensure that um, we don't just pay what uh, we have not spent and which is going into people's pockets. We, we, we will be able to do that. Raso Marsabet, I passionately loved that county when we were developing the wind power projects. There is no reason why the developer on the project, you know, when you develop 400 megawatts, there is the power which is retained to manage the equipment. Um, and, and that power should have really uh, looked at the community of interest. We need to sit down and look at using the organic, the power that, when you develop 400, we have possibly retained 20 for the use to manage the equipment because they need power to basically uh, support the operations within the the site, and it should really, it shouldn't be asking for too much, uh, because I think the power we need within the community will not be more than three, four, five megawatts, and then therefore we need to revisit, and under the act where the resource sharing of um, local resources with the community, the county, and the national government, we should see how to support the community around Marsabet so that we do not just evacuate power the way we evacuate water out of Muranga, and the locals uh, are just see the, 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 the power going out of their, their county and they, they don't benefit. So we, we can look at that. Um, Naisul, I think I did combine your question with, 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 uh, with, uh, with doubt. Thank you, Chairman. Chair, my question has not been answered about the refinery. Um, let, let, me, let me take up that very quickly. Question. The refinery. Take another round after that. The, the refinery chairman was closed during my time because we were supporting the refinery through importation of crude, which uh, was then refined and um, on, on, on what we called a yield shift. You bring a crude and you need to produce so much of AGO, you need to produce so much of PMS. And many times, our refinery, because it was a very old technology, was not meeting uh, the requirements of the yield shift. So there was a shift from the planned to what was produced, and we were making so much losses. The second challenge was um, uh, the fuel coming out was not clean. If you drove a diesel engine those days, it kept going down every so often, because uh, the particles 
degree of particles in terms of um, um, what is approved to be clean fuel was not. So we had to shut it down. We either had to upgrade or to shut it down. Improving it was as more expensive as buying a new one. So we shut it down. The tank farm is huge. I think the tank farm is being used today for holding fuel, but we need to see how to utilize it better for use of our strategic reserves so that at times like now, when we're having serious challenges with Ukraine and Russia, we should be having some strategic reserves under the NOC 30% um, uh, framework that allows us to hold strategic reserves of fuel. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Chairman. Next, uh, Posing, Shurie, Ferdinand, Mishi. I, I thank you, Honorable Chair. One question each. Yes. And you have really balanced today. People who started early, you give them the last, and then the last, you give them the first. I think you are a very good uh, speaker today. I thank you. Now, uh, <laughs> to the nominee. No, it's true. only or always? It's the truth. It's fair. Now, the nominee, uh, uh, Chir Chir. There is this problem, which is an example of many other towns in Kapenguria which is getting really unclean power. Almost every day, bar blackouts. There are many towns like that, uh, honorable chair, in this country. But I think Apenguria receives one of the uncleanest power in the whole world. You cannot even predict to do anything, uh, uh, chair. We did, as, as leadership of West Pokot, at a particular moment, we presented our issues to the late uh, Kibaki during the back government. And what he did, he did was to recommend the evacuation of power from Takwell. You know, Speaker, we have Takwell, which is uh, generating power in West Pokot. So when somebody talks about unclean power, you don't understand. So that government proposed that we evacuate high power, uh, build uh, a substation in Urtum, so that we can develop the factory, which is now about like 40% being done, and then to Kitale so that uh, Ketale and West Pukot can share that power, which is clean power. And Ketrag on the did only power lines. And from that time, that's almost 15 years up to now, Chair, the power lines are there, Waziri, uh, nominee, they are there. What will you do as, because those are low-hanging fruits for your action, would you promise if this house agrees with the, uh, or, or, or approves you, would you say that that will be your 100-day expectation that you light up that line so that the people of West Bogota and Transwaya can be able to get clean power. They have been suffering since independence. Thank you, I thank you. I thank you. Sharia. I have represented you, but. I thank you, Chair. Uh, and one of nominee, as you consider the issue of Marseille, it also consider the issue of Balambala, where you are getting your solar power. Since you also seem not to be getting power, and uh, we give the nation about 53 kilowatts through solar. Um, my question. Is a very simple one. Do you have any plans to, in, to improve the strategic petroleum reserve in the country to caution Kenyans against future fuel shortages? Thank you, Chair. Jukaria. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I, I think uh, I, I wanted to ask this, this aspect of uh, uh, capacity charge, and, and that is the animal in the energy sector. Uh, but at the same time, also, Chair, I have another one on NOC, the National Health Corporation. Uh, Chair, the, uh, I would want to ask uh, the nominee to address us on the capacity charge uh, for the, uh, the PPS. Uh, and on NOC, Honorable uh, Chair, you know, the fuel prices in this country, the strategic, uh, the international strategic uh, reserves for the internationally recognized is around 90 days. And here I think is only seven days. And it is very dangerous. Yet we don't uh, fund NOC uh, uh, substantially for it to be able to undertake its mandate. So NOC was just reduced to start producing actually distribution of gas, which is something else that also needs to be addressed. 
uh, in this country. Because if we don't then take uh, that aspect of a, 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 a position of funding NOC, then forever we will be in these problems of high prices and things like that. But most Thank importantly is, is the gas aspect again, which we don't have. Uh, it is being controlled by private people, including NOC buying gas from a private person to sell to Kenyans. And it was very strategic when we started the Mwanainchi gas that was meant to uh, reduce the forest problems. And all of a sudden, again, this, this, uh, the former finance person just decided to put taxes on the gas again, and everybody is back on the wood and timber and charcoal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mish. Hey. Thank you, Chair. So many next. questions have already been asked, but I have just a few of them, like two. Okay, Chair. Yes. I will abide by the norms. <laughs> uh, I think there is a I need to have... Carrier, please switch off your mic. Oh, sorry, sorry. Mm. Uh, to the nominee, my question is, what plans do you have in terms of enough supply of renewable energy to Kenya's national grid? I'm citing one project, and that is the Lake Turkana Wind Power Project, which was there. I don't know whether you are still there or, do, or you had already left. This project, its aim was to supply renewable energy to Kenya's national grid. But there was a lot of corruption. So many millions of Kenyan shillings were embezzled and could not be accounted, according to auditors' reports. I don't know how are you going to be dealing with the cartels in the energy sector, because it is just too much. Kenyans are having burden of high bills, fraudulent billing, and maybe it is because of the monopoly of KPLC. What is your take on that status? that they have that monopoly in terms of generation, transmission of electricity, and still they cannot address the plight of the consumers in terms of irregular power outages and other reasons. So thank, what thank is your you. take and what are the way forward for you to ensure that at least Kenyans will enjoy and at least there will be a reduction in terms of costing for electricity? Thank you, Michi. Thank you. Fernand? Let's take another one. Uh, uh, Nominee, I, I and just want you to make be the last. Yeah, yes. I want to make a comment and a very serious one. The relation between rare, rural electrification, and Kenya Power 90. Uh, you'll find that um, they do their survey, and uh, they bring the uh, transformers and are fixed in whatever place it is, and takes months and weeks, and you know for the Kenyan Power 19 to come and do the, uh, the connections. That has been a challenge in the rural area. That has been a major co complaint among the consumers. So what are you going to do about that? Davis, can you answer those five as precisely? Mwishima Kosing, Kapinguria and Clean Power, uh, yet we generate out of Takwell. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised that the substation in Otum, which our chairman speaker, I would like to invite you to must, my first report to parliament in line with the constitution, which captured serious project gunshots on an Otum, I've just checked, an uh, Otum substation uh, is in my project gunshots. It should have been finished. I don't know what happened when I left the office. And uh, so my first assignment would be to review and check what has not the unfinished work. I'd like to invite members to look at that report. It's a report I made to Parliament in my first year in line with the Constitution uh, article, which requires uh, cabinet secretaries to make a report periodically to Parliament. And the unclean power is a vo voltage. You know, Chairman, our systems operate at 240. And when the voltage drops, then we are even likely to damage your devices. So even where I come from, we, we, it's western part of the country and the voltages are very weak. So around seven to 10 at night, when all the homes are switched on, the voltages drop. So we just switch off Kenya power and run on a generator, which is very expensive. So the challenge that faces Kenya sometimes is not even the cost of power, because we can continuously run on generator and still make money. 
The problem is the unclean power which damages some of our devices. So we need uh, that substation in Otum. Uh, but more importantly, we need to finish the Olkaria Lesos. Um, I think it's a 400 kV line to ensure that we are able to carry high voltage, low current, and step it down. Western Kenya, western part of Kenya has got a challenge, and I think we need to address that. We know the problem. We need to put some investment and obey the timelines in line with the project defined so that we close some of these issues. So we're going to look at that, Banako uh, Singh. Um, Siri in Balambala, yes, again, it's a comment. Uh, we want to treat Garissa where the power is coming off from solar at 50 megawatts. There is no reason why the community of interest do not have power, and we need to look at that. Uh, within the, within the, the station, we can be able to have a small substation to serve the uh, community of concern or the community of interest where we are picking the power from within Carissa and Balambala area. Uh, strategic reserves is becoming a must. We need to look at that. Currently, we do our fuel purchases using spot, spot purchases, which are done through the open tender uh, procurement system, and it's managed by OMCs. Uh, the government doesn't put any money. They compete well, and I think we get good price of uh, petroleum products and uh, petro petroleum and petroleum products until we have this challenge uh, which is facing the whole world. But yes, we need to have strategic reserves. We need to build enough tankage. We need to see how best to utilize uh, the KPRL uh, facility, uh, dimension, enough storage, but be very careful so that we don't do what is equivalent to aging or as we age, we make sure we understand so that we are not holding expensive fuel when the price of fuel has gone down or, uh, or vice versa, which would be advantage, uh, of advantage to the country. So we will quickly look at that and, and, and address the need for strategic reserves uh, uh, for our country. Uh, Gekaria, NOC, capacity charge, fuel charge, and the gas um, is something that, let me talk to, let me talk to to gas first. There's been so much improvement in the use of gas in this country today. And I did pick some numbers which I want to just refer to very quickly. Um, the per capita use of gas in Kenya 15 years ago was a 2.3 kilogram per household. Today, we are at 7.5 with this one energy, one energy gas and the initiatives that we have done, albeit the challenge of the one investor who manages the facility the private investor. If we opened up that space, and I've seen the strategic plan of uh, NOC and the energy sector, we want to move to 13 kilograms per capita use of gas per household. If we do that, some of the very, very interesting gains will be like, let me, let me run that again as the forest cover. Again, some 15 years ago, we were at 4% forest cover. Today, we are at 12. If we move the use of gas to 13 kilograms per household uh, and stop using biomass, because the underside is we are cutting wood to burn for our houses. If we just improve by 10, by 5% to go to 13%, the forest cover will go up from 12% to 22% which is so significant. So we can talk about planting three million trees until the cows come home, or we can, yes, and we need to do that, but we can quickly accelerate the facility in Mombasa for gas trading, uh, manage the initiatives that we had started together and which are covered in some of our reports, and we will be able to move our forest cover to 22%, address the global warming by reducing the the carbon dioxide, which is uh, not good for our environment and the ozone, ozone layer. Um, on, um, on fuel, I think we've talked quite a bit on fuel to the extent that we really need to quickly develop our own resource and ensure that we are not over-reliant on uh, our brothers out there. Uh, and even when we are, it's not because we don't have ours. So we need to quickly accelerate the development of the Lokicha Basin and ensure that uh, 
we are able to whether refine it here or refine outside. You know, there is um, in the production sharing contract, the government has a stake in any discovery, so we can buy into our our share of the petroleum that has been discovered. Uh, and, and be able to use that to address our strategic challenges. Mishimbogo, uh, renewable energy, Lecturkana, uh, I think we've talked quite a bit about that. And uh, power generation, there'll be a lot of learning, uh, albeit the challenges and the mistakes we have made from power when we do the power purchase agreements. Because when a private developer does, like Leongalani, which is the Lecturkana we are talking about, they get what you call a PPA, a power purchase agreement, which is a document which helps them to raise banks, whether in the international market, to develop that facility. So unless the impropriety is coming at the negotiations of the PPA, if the private investor does funny games during the development of the project, it does not change the structure and the, the cost structure on the PPA. So maybe to just simply answer your question, we'll need to look more critically into um, what goes into our PPA. Are we generous? Are we giving them too much in the PPA so that they play games? Uh, and therefore, because it locks the cost of power, it is locked at the PPA stage, which is done uh, before the project picks off. Picks off. I'm told by my uh, predecessor, if I get approved, uh, Monica Juma, that she has since moved the PPA negotiations to the ministry and will work more closely with the Ofteka, which is Kenya Power, to ensure that the PPAs uh, do reflect the cost of power that we would like to drive this economy. Because like I said earlier, if we are going to attract global farms, the cost of our energy is, is, is basically not acceptable. We have to bring it down, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Davis. I think we'll end here with you. Can I, can I finish, Ferdinand? You, was that a comment or a question? Uh, he just made a comment. It was a comment? Yes. So, but I talked earlier about unbundling. The, the challenge between this energy sector, though they are un unbundled, they tend to crisscross each other. And we need to define clear lines. Where does REC start? Or rather, where does Kenya Power start? Where does REC uh, start? So that we don't have one company bringing the transformer, another one is pulling the lines. And where are the costs captured in the cost structures of the organization? Mm -hmm. These are some of the challenges we are facing in the energy sector. And sometimes it is competition for business because uh, it depends on who is doing the tendering. But if the responsibility belongs to REC, let it be at REC, and they should deliver in line with the timelines. If it belongs to Kenya Power, let's be very clear about those definitions of responsibilities. Uh, thank you, Chairman. One question is not answered. The one on the monopoly. Uh, Mishi, I'd, I'd indicated, and I didn't want to speak very loudly because of uh, the fact that we have quite a bit of uh, uh, letters of support as government to Kenya Power, and we need to support Kenya Power even as a monopoly for a while. But in the Act, Energy Act 2019, that monopoly has been has been opened up, and uh, we'll just need to see how to implement the off-grid very carefully, how we ensure that we don't incur power losses because of long transmission and building lines into remote areas uh, where we, are, we can do off-grid. And so the monopoly is not going to be a challenge going forward because the Act has addressed that. Uh, thank you. one final question. Kenya Power is a monopoly. It has no competitor, apart from now the few isolated solar panels here and there that are grossly insignificant to their overall performance. Why are they constantly in financial difficulties? They sell a commodity that you and I cannot do without. When you default, they come and disconnect you on the pole literally extorting your payback and reconnection. Why are they having financial difficulties? Um, yeah, it's a dollar question, Chairman, that we all need to look at. Because when you are a monopoly 
and like I, I said in one of my term papers, we need to look at um, when the market is locked for you, you tend to be complacent. The investment today that is needed to strengthen the Kenya Power Network uh, could be significant. But I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really, uh, it's a challenge, but like if I- If you look at their billing, yeah. they literally have no overheads. They pass on everything to the consumer. Everything. Why are they in the red constantly? I think you must go there and correct this if we approve your, point, your nomination. Um, uh, Kenya Power balance sheet, like a knock, is it knock? Yes, needs to be looked at. I think unless we address uh, the kind of exposure they have put themselves into, uh, so that um, really we need to restructure Kenya Power balance sheet. It is not looking good. Uh, I have not, I can, I can say on camera that I have serious look at it, but the Kenya power balance sheet and the kind of um, exposure is quite significant. Um, it should be doing much better to be having a loan of about um, 100 billion against a revenue of 60 billion. And a lot of that money belongs to KenGen, the generators, and so on and so forth. It's something that boils down to a cash flow. Uh, the cash they collect is not enough to service uh, the, where we almost find ourselves as a country today. We collect so much revenue, is it enough to service our loans and run the social obligations that we need to run as a government? And then so we need to support Kenya power, not with cash, but we need to look at, to re-engineer the whole way of how they do business. Banks will market what would otherwise look like cheap loan and uh, because a lot of the generators, uh, the, 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 the lot of generation and build up in the power sector do get government letters of support, sometimes the ball ends up being the government responsibility. So, Chairman, there's a job to be done uh, in the energy sector. We need to look at how to restructure the balance sheet. We need to look at how to strengthen the network, which is uh, the power loss today on the network is almost at 20%. So when you're losing 20% and you have to recover from you and me, um, it's not tenable. So yes, there's work to be done, Chair, and uh, I think we are up to the task. Thank you. I give you three minutes to tell us your last wish. Uh, Chairman, I feel privileged to come to talk to this Honorable House today again uh, after being nominated for the position of um, energy and petroleum uh, to see whether we can together rebuild this country. The cost of power is a fundamental driver in the economic uh, foundation of any nation. And unless we together address the cost of power, uh, the power mix, the power security, like I said earlier, when we talk about competitive cost of power, and we want to bring investors into our uh, special economic zones in Dongonkundu, in uh, Olkaria, where we have ready st steam for primary processing of leather. Can we get the cost of power right? Kenya enjoys a very special place in the state of nations in that we do about 90% of green energy. And we are one of the qualifying countries to even go into green energy hydrogen, which is another phase of development in power and export of power in hydrogen, where it's a requirement that if you're going to go into this green area of development of green uh, hydrogen, you must be using green energy to do that. And as we go forward, uh, except for the challenges we are facing in the security of supply and the cost of power, uh, the fact that Kenya today does about 90% of, of uh, its energy on a renewable source of energy is one thing that really helps us to address the world climate. And even as we go to COP27 in Egypt in the next two weeks, we stand to challenge countries like Germany who are folded back and they are going back to fossil fuels or, or coal. 
we stand to challenge countries like Britain. And I want to confirm, Chair, that with the development of human resources, with the development of geothermal and capacity that we've built and we are currently exporting into other countries neighboring us, we will be able to develop under my leadership once confirmed uh, in the area of renewable energy, in geothermal, in wind, and in solar. Uh, I have the capacity, I have the strength, and I have, I'm a team player. I want to work with this house, I want to work with the people in the energy sector to be able to deliver this for our country. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Davis. We will uh, release you to go to your other duties. If there are any documents that you have not shared with us, uh, do so with the Secretariat. Sergeant, as uh, the distinguished member leaves, look for the Honorable Moses Courier. Give us five minutes to stretch, members. Five minutes to stretch, a health stretch, and five minutes, please. We start at 6.01.